Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our third BIM Real Summit 2017. And the theme for this year is BIM. Actually, how can we start to put BIM into real, meaningful practice? We're here to support the Rail BIM Summit because BIM is vitally important to Balfour BT as a business. We currently have 35 projects utilising BIM to deliver high value to our customers. The reason we've attended this conference is actually to try and widen people's perspectives on what they're going to do with the data that they have from BIM modelling. What we're hoping to do is be able to educate people on what else they can do with that data and other ways they can utilise it. When you're thinking about the BIM world, which is all about how you do things, producing documents and drawings and models, you need to put processes in place and you need to get people to understand why you're doing that because people just like to do it the way they did it on the last project. If people recognise the importance of the quality of concrete, the quality of steel, but actually from a BIM perspective, it's the quality of the information, making sure that the information is of the appropriate quality and it can be used and remain in use fully through the life of the operation and maintenance. BIM is going to offer the opportunity to see all aspects in an integrated way, allowing problems and projects to be explored early on, before construction. And so this is where we're trying to interpose ourselves at the very early stages of construction to make sure that effectively we're engineering out the safety risks before they're actually st uh, spades are put in the ground. Coming to the conference today was a question for us of meeting the right level of people, the decision makers, the ones that understand the benefits of this kind of solution. It's BIM oriented, it's quality driven and they're the kind of people that we need to uh, approach. Engineers don't have the chance to visualise the assets they're going to work on, so unless they've been to this asset multiple times, they don't fully appreciate where this asset is located, how you get to it, how you get your tools there, how you're going to undertake the work, where the access is. So having the ability to pull in all that graphical information that's stored in the common data environment gives them a chance to scope that work in advance. BIM is a wonderful, wonderful structure for you to bring technology that you've actually been using for many years together. You've all had advanced systems in building management, knowing how well an asset is performing. You've always had the drawings of how your building is manufactured, how it's done, but you haven't necessarily shared it out and used it for other things. Virtual reality and safety go hand in hand in my eyes. It gives you the opportunity to practice and try something in an environment that's no longer sterile, or moreover, no longer just me or you talking across the table from each other. And that's what we're trying to look at, is giving people opportunities to experience environments that could be dangerous in real life, and giving them the opportunity to experience them with a danger, instead of them actually experiencing it too late and having to then think on their feet. And from the benefits of BIM and to the information, which is the key of that, is extracting data. So how do we do that? We do that using either signal and simulations, we have information extraction, you know, data analysis, we have carbon emissions, which we're trying to track as well. We have 4D simulations and so we can do contractability and planning. And that has been one of the driving forces on our project, it really helped us to determine what we're doing and um, again, before it's done. We do it virtually before it becomes a reality. 